Hey, what's up guys? I know it's been a good hundred and something days since I last posted a true video to this channel other than a couple of live streams here or there. I've been incredibly busy as some of you will know. I've re-enrolled into university because I did need that degree to go a little bit further with my career and uh, kind of fill in some gaps that I, I did, felt I had in my knowledge. Um, that being said, incredibly busy now so I'm going to be paring down um, I'm going to be paring down the tutorials I do make so that I can more properly give you more consistent um, updates throughout the process. So that being said, I'm going to be dropping a couple of my video series. So uh, I'm not going to be doing the Godot Android series anymore. And um, I may, I will likely do a lot less of the C++ series, though I do want to continue with the networking because that's something that I, I personally need to work on. Um, I'm going to be putting a lot more focus on the Balkan engine series. Um, specifically, I've made a whole bunch of progress uh, on my own and I'm going to be making a whole bunch of tutorials uh, one after the other and they'll be released over time and hopefully uh, that'll get you up to speed to using Vulkan in, a, in a kind of a, a cool way. So uh, without dragging this on too much further, uh, hopefully you're glad that I'm back. You're going to look forward to both my uh, networking and my Vulkan tutorials. And let's just jump into this one where we're going to be adding um, macOS support into our Vulkan engine because uh, my MacBook Pro is faster at encoding than my Windows PC, so we're going to use my MacBook Pro from now on to develop the engine, which uh, will require a macOS uh, compatibility layer, um, but it's fairly easy to do, so let's uh, let's just go do that now. All right, so uh, future Paul here, I realize I forgot to explain an important step. One thing you're going to need on your Mac, just like on Windows, is you're going to need the Vulkan SDK. Um, which includes Molten VK. So if you look at Vulkan SDK and you go to Lun Lunar G, uh, this will include um, Molten VK inside. So the way Vulkan works on Mac is unfortunately um, Apple is Apple and wants to do its own thing. So you're going to need a compatibility layer. It's kind of a translation layer between Vulkan and Metal, uh, which uh, it's called Molten VK. So if you look here, you look up at Molten BK, it's its own project on GitHub. And that it, it does precisely that. It basically, it creates a Vulkan 1.1 compatible graphics layer that will uh, convert your Vulkan um, code into uh, metal co code. Um, by itself, you don't need to do anything. So to do that, you're going to just install the Vulkan SDK like you normally would, um, most other things. So you can just download the Mac uh, version here and run the installer. I also believe that you could probably use um, Brew, a uh, homebrew. So you'd probably do something like a Brew install uh, Vulkan VK or Vulkan SDK or something. But um, that's not what I did. I used the, the official um, distribution here, wherever it was, this one, the damage file here. So with that said, let's just jump into the rest of the video. So if you look at the uh, current state of the repositories that I've been linking to up to this point, you'll see that I've been pushing uh, over the last couple of weeks quite a bit of updates and prepping a bunch of tutorials for you guys. Um, what we're going to do is I've created a new branch called Tutorial Branch that will um, that is going to mirror what I'm showing in the, in the tutorial. So we're just gonna check out those branches and those will be exactly what we had before where um, last time we added SDL for multi-windowing um, or for multiple platforms, which we, will, we have more work to do in that vein. And for the YouTube project, we also have a similar tutorial branch. Let's open our project now that we're on the tutorial branch and let's see what happens when we just try building. So first things first, we're going to remove these folders here just to start from on a clean slate and we'll reload the CMake project. Okay, so what happens when we try to run this? Mm, let's not, let's not run it in release. Let's run it in debug. It doesn't make a difference, but let's run it in debug. 
First thing, so we get a bunch of deprecated, deprecated API warnings, um, and that is due to um, internal uh, GL. Uh, let's do the th some other stuff, but um, we should have gotten. All right, so let's just try building and see what happens. Okay. So first things first, we had a compiler difference here. It's saying we're creating a string, but we actually never included string. So let's do that now. There we go. Now let's build that. Okay. And now that build, but you'll see that when we go to run, it fails. Failed to cast window surface arguments. Bad any cast. So uh, if we look for this warning throughout all our projects, we'll see that this is happening when we are uh, trying to create our draw service. Yeah, for, so for whatever reason, I couldn't quite figure out why, um, the arguments inside this unordered map are actually not, um, they're not allowing the anycast for whatever reason. Just, I don't know if it's a Clang compiler thing or if it's a Mac, Thing. I would imagine it's a clang compiler thing, but we're going to change the signature to use int star like that. All right, so we are going to change this to int star. So we're just going to be passing um, pointers around. Uh, let's go here. We will change this one to int star. Oops. We will do it in the window as well because we are no longer we are doing it like that and we're also going to need to do it uh, if we go back to STL window and just look for it we're also going to need to do it in our multi-platform window okay and finally int star here there's going to be no more uh, any casts uh, going on here so we're going to go to our Vulkan renderer uh, to roughly line here ish uh, it's going to be here. So here you'll notice that we are um, doing any cast like this, but we want this to be a uh, map with pointers. So we are just going to uh, cast these to pointers. So we're going to reinterpret cast, uh, reinterpret pointer cast. I think I can do it like this. I want to say like this. No, do I need to do it like this? Nope. Oh, so maybe I can just do it like this. This looks right, I want to say. And we're going to do the same thing for this one here. So we're just going to do this like that. And this just reinterprets them as uh, int pointers. Now, uh, with that done, we can then go back to our STL window like this. And we don't have any casts here. So now we're just going to reinterpret cast them back, right? So let's just do a reinterpret cast BK instance like this. And we are going to do the same thing for our surface. Now we can get rid of this failed any cast here because we are no longer doing an any cast. And we will go back like this. And we will do basically the same thing inside our multi-platform window as well um, here. And we will go back to here and reinterpret cast. Uh, there's no has value here. So we just want to reinterpret cast this. And then we can just do it like this. But if it's not there, we just do that. And then uh, same thing here, we just reinterpret cast this. Again, we remove the any cast. And that should pretty much uh, do it for that. So let's build that see what happens so it builds uh, let's see what kind of error we get now so now it says failed to create window surface so it's still failing to create here now this is a different issue altogether so one thing we're gonna have to do now is we're actually gonna need to uh, enable a couple of um, device extensions so if we look into our renderer here 
Um, if we look at where it's actually failing, we might be able to get a closer look. It's failing to create the window surface. And if you look um, inside init core, we have a valid instance and everything. Everything looks okay. If we, we inspect some of these values real quick. So if we look at uh, this and instance, um, well, the instance is va uh, there's a, a value here for the instance. Um, we haven't, there's nothing for the physical device, um, but we are not there yet. The device is afterwards. So we're just having trouble making the surface, right? So there's something going wrong uh, somewhere up here. Now, you can trust me to say, in saying that this is working here, that this, this is going to properly cast things properly. So what else can we do? Well, we can look at this builder instance. Now, I did some Googling on this, on why it wouldn't work with Molten BK, why I was getting uh, can't create a surface. And it turns out that um, Molten BK, which is the compatibility layer for Mac OS uh, and Vulkan to convert the Vulkan calls into metal, um, requires a an extension so first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to be able to uh, change this builder, right? So we're going to be building the builder separately from everything else. So we got a VK instance builder builder. And then right after um, builder here, we're going to say builder dot enable extension. And we're going to say VK. Molten VK, Mac OS, Surface, right? Now this is just an extension. If we, if we look it up on Google quickly, if we just look it up, we look here and it says the Molten VK Mac extension is an instance extension. It provides a mechanism to create a VK Surface KHR object based on an NS view, which is the native Surface type of Mac OS, which is underpinned by uh, metal layer. So basically what it's saying is that to be able to use Vulkan on Mac, which requires Molten VK, to be able to create the surface itself, you need to enable this extension. Right? Now, uh, if we run this now, uh, we'll see what happens. Now we got our triangle, right? So perfect. It's exactly what we're looking for. Now that we know that's working, uh, what else do we have here? We have, right, so we have here. We have a one error here. VK KHR portability subset must be enabled because um, the VK physical device supports it. Yeah, so we're going to be adding it to our uh, selector. Where is it? So we've got a selector here. We're going to want to add it to our selector. So we would do selector dot add required extension, and then we would add VK KHR basically exactly what this is here. I'm not going to type it. I'm just going to copy paste it. And then we can add a semicolon. And if we run that, we should lose all of our warnings, our runtime warnings. There we go. Runtime warnings are gone. And if we go back, we can close it. And there we go. So now we have it running on Mac. There's a couple of things we're going to want to do just to be clean about it. So You'll notice here that this what this is specifically a Mac OS um, option, right? So we're going to be enabling, we're going to need to start enabling or disabling extensions based on the um, platform we're on. So we're going to do it in a slightly dirty way now. We might clean it up later if it turns out to be more than a couple of extensions. But for now, we're going to create a vector. We're going to say std vector, vector std string. And we're going to call this uh, instance extension like this. Now we're going to check to see if we're on an Apple platform. And then if we're on Apple, we're going to check, we're going to include some target conditionals, which is an Apple, uh, an Apple specific header. And then we're going to do another if, if statement target, 
OS Mac. So if we're on a Mac, then we will say instance extensions dot push back. Uh, we can do in place back. And we will take this surface, do it like that, do that, right? Oops, wrong button. So now we're building, we've built a map with this extension in place, and we are going to um, add the extension. So what we need to do now is we're going to need to take off this build, um, this builder instance, we're going to just say, put, actually move this down here, equal builder dot build, right? And we are going to create a for loop here for auto instance extension in instance extension. And we are just going to builder dot uh, add or mm, enable extension, extension, uh, instance extension dot D string like that. So that will enable the, uh, instance, ex instance extension if we're on Mac and we're going to do the pretty much exactly the same thing a little bit further down for the other one. So we're going to go down here. Uh, we are going to, oops, why am I having so much trouble copy pasting stuff today? So uh, we want all of this and we will do it right here in our selector. We will call this device extensions. Same thing, target conditional device extensions dot add. And we are going to add this one. And then we are going to do the exact same thing here. And we are going to do it underneath our selector here. Uh, device extension and device extensions. And we're going to say selector dot. Uh, what is this? Add enable. Yeah, remembering all of it. Add required. That was right. Just. Selector dot add required extensions device extension the string like that. Uh, why do I have a feeling that I, I did something wrong here? It worked. So let's just play that and see if it still runs. It does. We'll close that. Is there any issues? No. So that is about everything that we need to do um, in order to get everything running as it is right now on Mac OS. Simply the biggest issue was that for some reason the Anycast wasn't working on the window and in our renderer we had to enable a few, a couple of extensions, uh, an instance extension and a device extension. So. Um, Stay tuned for maybe next week, the week after, depends um, how long it takes me to edit the next video. But uh, in the next one, what we are going to do is we're actually going to, so at the bottom here, we currently have a create pipelines, a function. What we are going to do next time is we are going to abstract this out so that we can create uh, a shader class and we can have multiple shaders running at the same time. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Uh, we will get to that in not too long. See you soon.